Okay, so today I am going to rebuild or start to rebuild the seat from my 1980 um, Enticer 340. So this is a snowmobile seat and I think everything here is original. Um, I think this was the original piece of wood. Um, you can see 40 years old, pretty rotten. And over there is the original cover. I might reuse that because it's in such good shape, but we'll see. Anyways, I need to replace this. And for that, I've bought this piece of plastic over here. I guess uh, High Pact might be uh, a brand name or something, but it was marketed as VHMW, very high molecular weight. Um, another plastic is UHMW, it's a little more common, so I think this is somewhere between UHMW and puckboard. But the reason I got this is it's uh, 3 8 inch thick, which matches the original wood, so that um, when I stack all this up, the original bolt hole uh, locations for the mounts will line up with what's on the, the tunnel of the snowmobile. So this guy is the front piece. It sits in there. Um, the holes are a little busted out in this plastic piece, so I'm going to have to reinforce the sides with a bit of tin. And then I think I might cut out another piece of that to act as a bit of a backer for these broken holes back here. And then this is the, the trunk, so the light would sit in there. And on the bottom of this guy, there's a hinge portion, some springs, and then on the bottom of that hinge portion are some studs that go through the tunnel, and you put nuts from the bottom side. And originally, there was a little piece of fabric that is on the bottom of this. Kind of see how that's riveted on there. So that's that's stock. I, I notice a lot of people when they redo their seats, they don't bother with this, which makes sense. But that's what it looked like from factory, I think. And then this is the tin piece of the trunk. And it is pretty rusty and pretty rotten, so I'm going to get after this with a wire wheel, clean it up the best I can, and then uh, probably repaint this, and then maybe do a backer piece out of plastic, same as that guy. And then this is just like a little piece of rubber that sits underneath the trunk between the opening and the wood. You can kind of see where the wood was there. And... Um, that looks in good shape, so I'll try and reuse that too. But that's the plan right now, is to transfer all these holes in this old wood onto a piece of that, cut that out the same shape as this, and try and rivet this all together. Okay, I have the original wood piece on top of the plastic one here. I'm just going around with my Sharpie, making some dots where the rivet holes are, the ones that are still there I guess. <clears throat> Some of these have rivets in but I'll go over with the metal piece and the plastic front piece and just double check that they're in the same spot or take the averages and then I'll uh, probably make a drawing of what this looks like. So yeah, kind of see the the dots there and just take some measurements come back to this. Okay so I made some dimensions based on uh, the holes. I noticed that uh, the holes for this back metal piece weren't quite straight so I kind of straightened them out. So I don't know how accurate this is all going to be but uh, it might help somebody. So these dimensions here are the center to center distances between the holes. So I'll, I'll probably add a drawing but if I don't you might just have to, to pause the video to get those um, and then these are the dimensions to the holes this way from uh, the statum being the front of the sheet so those guys and then the overall length is 810 and the overall overall width is 410 and so that puts uh, the center at 205 and so you can kind of figure out all your hole spacings from that and they line up pretty good with the the pieces here um, I think this front piece this plastic piece might flex a little bit to get them to line up but it's pretty good same with this metal piece on the back but yeah uh, line up these two back holes here 
you can kind of see the dots and in all the holes so should work out for somebody hopefully uh, I think the next step is to do some drilling or cutting we'll see yeah it came up on our lines pretty good there Got both sides so yeah clean this up we'll radius these corners to match the other one but uh, I think I'd, before I do any of that, I'll uh, drill some holes for rivets. So my game plan here is pretty simple. I'm going to drill through with a small pilot bit. And then once I've done all the holes, I'll flip it over and I'll counter bore it with uh, one of these Forstner bits. I think I'll use a half, half inch one. And I'm just going to do that a little bit so that the, the head of the rivet isn't proud underneath so that this is resting on the tunnel instead of the head of the rivets and then once these are all done then it can go through with the the larger size drill bit for the rivets okay, I just realized I picked picked large head rivets for this so I'm going to use a 5 8 inch Forstner bit and I just taped it um, so I have a depth gauge about an eighth of an inch that should give me enough more than enough clearance for the head of that rivet so I'll do that everywhere where I need one of those Two of these holes are actually for these studs that go right through. So I'm just going to mark that so I don't forget. And then these other two in the center here also get rivets. Just double check and make it all those deep enough. Okay, so I got a drill bit about the same size as the rivet, so I'll just go through and see how we fit. Whoa, very snug. Take a look at this fit. Oof, size on size. That's crazy. Hopefully that's not too tight. So I just did a dry fit with all the rivets in there and I'm pretty happy with it all, how it all lined up. Uh, I think this one in the center might be a little further back than the two beside it but um, in my case it's broken so that's fine. This, These all seem to match up pretty good. I mean the holes in this one were a little big from rust but it's good enough for this and um, I went with really tall or long rivets so that I could put basically the same size backer plate behind these guys and still capture it um, so that's the next thing is I gotta work out basically a big washer to hold these broken flanges down and clean up this guy and maybe paint it and then we should be ready to put some foam on soon Okay, I didn't uh, film all that, but that cleaned up pretty well. I might hit it with some rust converter before I give it paint, but uh, yeah, got most of the heavy stuff off anyhow. Okay, so I 3D printed um, a little template of uh, what I'd like to use for a uh, backer on this. I just printed half of it to make sure that the holes lined up and that I have the the gaps for these ribs in the right spot. I took that over here and uh, just made an outline of that, flipping it over, marked the centers and then I'm going to set this actual piece on top, clamp it and, to make sure I get the holes in the same spot. And then I'll uh, 
probably cut this out with a jigsaw or something similar. Okay, I'm happy with how that's lining up. So I'm going to pack it with the 3 16 drill bit to get my centers and then I'm going to go through with my pilot bit, bit again so that I can uh, counter bore it from the back side kind of like I did with the other piece. Pilot bit. And the whole reason behind the, the pilot bit is uh, I need a small hole to locate the center of this Forstner bit. Um, it'll walk around too much if it's the the full size 3 16 hole. So, um, the washers I'm going to use on the back side of these rivets are only half inch, but I'm still going to use the 5 8 inch uh, bit just to give myself a little clearance. Now I can go back through and open this up to the 3 16. Okay, I'm not sure a jigsaw is the right tool for this, but it's what I got. So, let's see what we can get done here. I'm gonna try this roto zip style tool in the drum. We'll see if that is any better. Well, combination of the jigsaw and the and the Dremel, it turned out pretty ugly, but it looks like it uh, kind of lines up. And now I just need to make a notch here for this bump. I think I can do that with the scale saw, but looks like it should line up. So, okay, so I've set the depth of the saw to be about a quarter inch, so that should leave me about. An eighth of an inch of material left over once I notch this out. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so a few iterations with a hot utility knife to open these up a little bit more. Um, I have something that fits pretty good. Lines up all right on this side. Might need to long one hole but uh, we'll see how it fits up with the base okay so I just uh, did a bit more fiddling and then I ended up uh, just drilling these holes out in this piece a little bit bigger than than the other ones but because I'm using washers on these rivets I think that'll be fine but I think I got a pretty good bite there the only thing I'm not too sure about is whether the foam will take this up or whether or not I'll need to cut out the foam to uh, compensate this extra thickness here. I think it should be fine but I'll get that riveted down and we'll go from there. Just going to heat up a knife to round over these corners. So I'm just going along with the file and I'm going to break this sharp edge just so it doesn't have a tendency to cut the fabric. Okay, got all the rivets in place. I'm just holding this piece on with a bit of tape for now. Put a rivet washer on the back side. Cinch that all down. Should be able to secure this in place. Got sheared off in the wrong spot. Hmm. Let's see how we did on the other side. Doesn't look too bad. Could go down a little further. Hmm. Have to figure that out. Just tried this other side, and that one seemed to go a lot better. And I think I can trim this excess off here because the little handles inside there so I don't, know, I don't think I'll bother because it's just foam there but yeah should work good 
there ended up getting them all in there I had to redo this first one it was crooked and so it broke the I don't know what you call this, the anvil or whatever, before it pulled through, so I replaced that one. This middle one was a little out of place, so I had to re-drill the hole a bit, but they're all in there and pretty stout, so I think that's going to work good. Okay, this is cleaned up a bit, so I'm just going to give it a coat of paint. Okay, so I got paint on here, I'm happy with that. I just made some cardboard templates. These are going to be a lot simpler than the backers on the other piece, but to figure out what I need to cut out of this plastic. Um, so I'll cut this out, match up the holes, and do some drilling. That's the backing pieces for the trunk made up. I can rivet, rivet this down now. Looks like it's going to work out pretty good. Got those backer plates on, so just drew up a grid here. I'm gonna put some small holes in this pattern, just act as a drainage so that the moisture that doesn't get trapped between the seat foam and the puck board has somewhere to go. Now I can uh, test the fit of the seat foam. This rubber piece, I'll clean this up in a bit, but it just uh, slide in there and get captured by the tail light assembly. And this guy. Just sit down like that. And I'm pretty happy with that. I was a little worried that the thickness of this uh, backers would affect it a bit. Might be holding it up a little bit. I could always trim the foam, but I think once I wrap this with the seat cover, that'll all mold into place just fine. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I did end up notching the foam out a bit. Um, I don't think I needed to, but there was quite a bit of rust buildup on it, so I think it's healthier, and it does fit a little better. So. Um, I think I'm going to be glad I did that. just comes down a little easier. I did a little bit at the front. The corners were. Um, so that should hide that pretty good. I think the next step is to just... I don't know if I put the trunk in first. Probably not. I think I want to wrap this and then do the trunk. I was about to put the cover on and I realized I missed one of the most important parts and that's reinforcing this guy. So I made a template from the other side. So I think I'll cut out a piece of tin or metal like this and then pop rivet it on in three or four spots. Okay, I have my uh, templates marked out on a piece of metal here. Probably thicker than I need, but it's fine. Just use this little plasma cutter to Knock this up quick. There we go. Okay, so I spent a bit of time cleaning these up, drilled some holes, uh, bent them so that they match the the profile of the plastic a little better. So I'm going to drill some holes in the plastic to match the rivet holes. I'm going to stick some rivets in without popping them and then I'm going to take this over to the tunnel and just mark where this hole needs to be exactly and then once I have that drilled out then I can uh, paint these. 
Okay, I got that marked using the attachment on the tunnel there. Um, so we line this up. That's where the hole needs to be. It was a little lower than I was anticipating, so I didn't end up with much meat here, but should still work out. So I'll paint these and then I can uh, rivet them on here. Okay, I got uh, these reinforcement brackets painted and riveted on there, so looks pretty stout. So now, now I can put the cover on. So normally, if I were um, starting with a new cover, I'd start in the middle. But because I'm reusing this one, I'm going to reuse the, the holes that these little um, tabs grab at the back here. So I'm just going to go around, put those in, all in the same spot, and then I'll work my way around to the sides and staples. Now that I have those all started, I'm just going to snug it up by pulling the front. And then I'll uh, kind of paint these over with a tacking hammer. So because I started at the back, I think I want to pull the front as tight as I can first, hold that over, and put some staples in here. And then I'll just work my way around. But I also need to get these corners back to where they were originally. This is going to work out. So the camera battery died while I was doing that, but I just stapled all around the sides um, and then followed it up with a little tacking hammer and just uh, made sure that they're all driven down. And then I realized that I forgot the wires for the tail light, so I had to pop some of these off and uh, fish the wires through, but got it through the grommet here now. So happy with how this is looking. Uh, the next thing to do is to put this taillight assembly in there. So I think I just need to lay this rubber mat in here, get it lined up with my holes, and then put my assembly on here, pop it through those holes, and then put some rivets in there. Hook up the springs and we're almost done. Okay, I got the wire wires for the light hooked up, the springs hooked up. I just need to do this last little flap. I just uh, don't want to pull it so tight that it, it's opening the light, but I think something like that should do. I just realized there was a bit of extra material folded underneath of itself, so I just kind of Tuck some of that out and uh, cover up that gap. So that we're done. Um, pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, it's quite a bit of work. I don't know if it was worth it, but I don't think I'll ever have to replace that board again. As for weight, it's probably a little heavier than the original, um, but maybe not if that plywood was soaked with water. Uh, but yeah. Pretty happy with how that went. Time to put on the sled. Okay, here we go. It's back on the machine. Um, went on pretty good. Um, I don't have the right fasteners for up here, but I'll replace those with the right ones eventually. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of work, but um, I don't know if it was worth it, but it should last a long time. So pretty happy with how it turned out. Thanks for watching.